it may be October, but I'm already planning projects for next spring. And one of the biggest ones is going to be in this area where I've got a bit of a problem with the roof. So, so I can plan and get some drawings sorted out while the weather's still good. This roof has got to come down. So today is demolition day. What fun. So as I said at the start, I've got quite a big project coming up here in the spring. And although I keep walking under these roofs, and I don't think they're suddenly going to collapse on me, the risk is there, and probably a higher risk, of me actually cutting myself on some of this galvanised sheeting that's hanging down as well. So I need to measure up in this area and see what I've got under all this debris, and I can't really do that with this roof in place. So as the weather's quite good, and before we move into November and December, I want to take down the roof, clear this area out and see what I've got. So maybe over the winter I can do some designs, I can do some drawings and then the weather, as the weather gets better early next year I'm straight into the building. But before I take down the roof I think I'm going to have to clear this area of car parts and all the rubbish that's here. And I've seen as well on top of the roof you've got all this sort of like debris which is old leaves and that. there's a lot of branches hanging over. And that's why that's another reason why this has collapsed because there's so much weight on it as well. So I'm going to clear this out the best I can before removing maybe as much as this as possible before I get on to the serious demolition. So I think it's time for gloves on. Let's make a start. This area has obviously been used in the past for vehicle servicing. So there are car batteries, body parts and all kinds of vehicle related junk as well as this extremely heavy plough which I just don't know how I'm ever going to get out of here. That's not going anywhere. Anyone got a tractor? I could easily spend a couple more hours clearing things out of here but I'm just going to remove the main junk as I want to get on with the demolition. Number three. I have no clue what it is. Whatever it is, it's been the never. So before I remove any of this debris on top of the roof, I just want to show you what I'm dealing with because I've just had a look some of the support structure and it's dodgy to say the least have a look at this so this timber here that's holding up what's left of this is sitting on this blockwork and just about resting on this blockwork by maybe an inch three quarters of an inch so if i pulled that away this whole lot was going to is going to come down. So I'll use that to my advantage in a minute when I demolish it. But at the moment I don't really want to touch that, especially when I'm underneath it. I've got another section here that is less than desirable. This 4x2 has obviously completely failed and it's just sort of hanging on by a broken joint there. So that's not going to take much to bring down. And right at the opening here where I've got this timber running across the port in this roof, I can see that previously it's been nailed in in three places. You can still see the nails. Unfortunately, the timber has shrunk or moved to the right and is no longer anywhere near the nails. And it's just sitting on this bit of timber here by the skin of its teeth. So it didn't take much to take that down and for that to collapse as well, I don't think. And just like we saw a few weeks ago, I've got a really horrible splice here where someone's just nailed in a couple of bits of timber either side of a shorter bit of four by two that's sort of hanging on but I don't think it's going to take much to bring that down or to take it off of that ledge up there because it's not actually screwed or nailed in and I think all of this is just hanging on for dear life it's not going to take much for that corrugated sheet to become detached from that rotten bit of four by two that's actually hanging on to this piece of 4x2 only because this steel bar here has bent and one of the coach screws is still gripping. 
that all looks decidedly dodgy. So it's obvious that I've got to be a little bit careful here and I mustn't really disturb the roof because there's a good chance it's just going to collapse on me. But before I bring it down, what I do want to do is take as much weight off it as possible and get rid of all this debris here. And I think that's obviously not helping at all. And if I can get that off, that means that when it does come down, I can actually attack the galvanised roof rather than then, first of all, dig off all of this. This is a fairly easy bit. But the other bit, which is this hole here, is not quite so straightforward. I don't know how thick that is, and I assume that it probably runs all the way around this because trees have been dropping in this area for years. So I'm going to have to get a stick up there and see if I can dislodge that without bringing any of this down on top of me. Because just around behind me are these joints you just saw. They're all a little bit rubbish. And this one here as well. The trees above have obviously not been trimmed for many years, so this debris is literally years of decaying leaves, the weight of which has helped to collapse this roof. On the positive side, it looks like excellent compost, so I'm going to add it to my compost heap, ready for use in the spring. While I'm doing this, I think I have to be really careful not to disturb the structure while I'm standing underneath it. There's a huge amount up there and I'm only going to be able to get to a small percentage through this hole, but every little helps. What's the chance of finding a dead pigeon, do you think? I finally start with the demolition and my strategy is to work my way in from the entrance so I'm never underneath anything that can collapse on me. This first section surprises me that even once I take off the support it just stays in the same place. In civil engineering this is called load redistribution where structures have a tendency to redistribute their load if a part fails. So for instance, in a 10 storey building, if one single column is removed, it'll still keep standing. It's just the adjacent columns will just do more work. But obviously, if I keep cutting through enough, it will eventually come down. That seemed to do it. With the first part of the structure down, I can get to the corrugated sheeting and remove it. My steel pole saw comes in really useful here, as I can cut these overhanging branches while keeping well out of the way, in fact, in the building next door. With the branches out of the way, more compost is revealed, which I just salvage as I go along. I don't know how many wheelbarrow falls I removed here at this stage, but it seemed that I was spending far more time dealing with the compost than I was demolishing the structure.
So with that last sheet out, that's the first half over. And I'm left with this section, which I haven't even touched yet. And you can see it's already broken its back in the middle. And it looks to me like everything wants to fall into the middle. And in some ways it's being held up by the branches above. So I think those branches have got to go. And then I suppose I just start from this end and maybe just help it collapse gracefully into the middle. Maybe. So after more cutting and clearing branches and assessing the structure, it's just a matter of nibbling away at each element and gradually the whole thing shrinks and the end is in sight. I've got to be a bit careful here, I've got a bit of a hazard. Ah, an inspection pit. The last thing I want to do is ending up going down there. With everything down, it was time for a good clear up, with plenty of old timber now accumulated, ready for the bonfire on the 5th of November, including the biggest circular corner post, which was rotten at the base and really not in a state to be reused. So there you go, the roof is gone and there's no more risk to life and limb. I've got a couple of posts still left here and a lot of cleaning up to do. Not only the stuff that I can see, but I've got a feeling that when I start digging in that, there's gonna be a lot more junk underneath. But I can take my time and do that over a series of weeks as well. This area is about three and a half meters wide by about six meters long. And on the north side, it's got this blockwork wall that's not perfect and just needs a couple of repairs. And on the south side, it's gonna be clear to the field once I get rid of all these brambles and all the rubbish here. So at least with the roof gone, it means that I can start planning the project that's going to be going in here. And you're going to have to wait until spring to see what that project is. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep taking some of this really good compost over to my compost heap, ready for next spring. So I'll see you next time. Lovely compost, well rotted leaves and twigs and a bit of rust actually from the roof. Rust, that's like iron isn't it? Compost with added iron, wow, I've got added iron with my compost. Eat your heart out, Monty bloody Don. <laughs>